Hey everyone, Action Movie Dad here with an advanced tutorial. Now I say advanced because within this tutorial I'm going to get into 3D layers and expressions and even into scripting and writing things into the After Effects support files directory. Now if that all sounds too scary or advanced for you, I encourage you guys to watch anyway. Because really I want to encourage everybody to try to take risks and figure out things that you've never figured out before within this program. I certainly did. The best part about this tutorial is that it documents my thought process and how I came to a solution to what seemed like a really simple problem, which actually had a very complex solution to make it easy, if that makes sense. And I'm going to share my result with you guys in a link below. But seeing the whole process is really informative and hopefully tells you about some of the different tools that are out there for solving things when you feel like you're out of your depth. And honestly, I didn't know how I was going to do this before I started. I had no idea if it was plausible, and I ended up somewhere different than I thought I was going to. So please, enjoy. Now, I do a lot of motion tracking in my work, and sometimes I use the After Effects camera tracker, and it can work great if you do a lot of garbage matting and a bunch of other things, but sometimes it just doesn't work the way I want it to. So sometimes I will use the Foundry's camera tracker, which works with the old version of uh, CS55. So I always keep an old copy of that around to do this kind of motion tracking stuff. But then I ran into this problem where I have a lot of these great nulls that are kind of placed in space. To simplify, let me show you what I'm talking about. I'll end up in a situation where I have three nulls kind of in space. And I feel like, oh man, there's gotta be a way that if I have a new solid in here, uh, and I make it 3D, well, you'd think you should be able to like take this and kind of align it to line up with these other nulls. And you can do it by sight if you want, which is like to rotate them around until they're kind of lined up and try to find the angles. And honestly, I used to do this a lot, which is so silly. Um, but you kind of like shop and kind of rotate the solid around until you feel like the solid is resting on those three things, but it's a pain. So anyway, I ended up jumping over to creativecow.net, which is a great resource. And someone, um, it looks like uh, Walter Soika, gave a great answer uh, to this question by Jason McKee, which was, is it possible to orient a 3D layer between multiple 3D nulls? It seems like there should be a way to orient a 3D layer between three nulls. And uh, Walter gave a fantastic answer, um, including some breakdowns about what math needs to happen to do this. So thank you so much, Jason, for your start. That's where I'm going to start with today. So let's take that for a little test run. If I add back a solid, make it 3D, and I go to the position, I can Alt-click on position to open up the expression window. Now. Now, simplifying Walter's code right here, I can paste this bit into the position. And it happens to work very well because I do, just like in the expression, happen to have a null one, two, and three in here. And for the orientation, I can copy this bit, copy it into here. I'm going to press R to reveal the rotation, Alt-click on it, and paste. And now look at that. This solid has oriented itself to be placed right in the middle of those three nulls and exactly aligned with them, which is perfect. It saves all the work that I used to try to do when I was doing this manually. It's very silly, I know. And because these are still expression linked, actually, I can grab one of these nulls and as I rotate it, around in space, you'll see that the plane actually keeps itself centered between the three points and rotated in whatever direction will touch all three of those nulls. Now, motion tracking and defining planes is the best application that I know of for this, but I feel like you could also use it for other things. So I wanted to make a slightly more functional version of this code for my purposes. Um, I want to be able to apply it really quickly. So one way to do that, uh, I'm going to press E twice and it'll reveal the two things that I put the expression on. If I shift select these two, I can right click and say copy expression only. And the cool thing about that is it means I could go paste it on something else if I wanted to. 
Um, but I want to be able to do this workflow really quickly. So we're going to try some more code modification. So I'll pop back into this document I was working with and just find some blank area to play with some code. I'm going to paste in what I copied out of here, which is the After Effects keyframe data, and it has all of this stuff organized like that. This is the way After Effects encodes a copy or paste function. You've probably noticed this when you accidentally pasted this into like an email or something like that before. But really what it is, is it just says what follows is After Effects keyframe data for 8.0. And here's what follows. Under the transform position properties, we're gonna add to the expression data, end of expression data. Same thing, yada, yada, yada. Very boring. But what's cool about this is if I copy this and say this was a brand new solid, new solid, I could say paste. And it copies all of the expressions, including all of that stuff, right to the right parts in here, which is great. So this is really cool when these nulls happen to be named null 1, 2, and 3. I don't think that will always be the case for the way I'm working. So I'm going to see if I can make this code even more universal. And to do that, I'm going to use something in expressioning called the index function. Now here's a really boring way to demonstrate what the index is. If I alt-click right here and add the expression index, you'll see that the opacity has become one. And the reason it's a one is because the white solid is layer one. Index, the index value is one. If I drag it down one, now it's two, now it's three, now it's four, now it's five. You can use this for a lot of really cool expressions, especially when you wanna link up a bunch of things or add a time delay or something like that to things you're using or you just want to be able to duplicate a whole bunch of the same thing but get different values. So for example, if I duplicate this a whole bunch of times and then reveal their opacities, they're all different, even though they just have one expression on their opacity index. So how am I going to use that here? This is my plan. Here in the code, it really specifically calls out this comp layer, and then it says null one. Now that's a really specific layer, and it means that the expression will be broken if there aren't three nulls called this. So I can't always use this. I have to remodify these names every time. But I could do something like this. I'll say i equals index. That means whatever layer I paste that on, it's going to use the variable i to represent whatever layer number I'm on. So I'm going to then say, let's define p1 by this comp layer i plus 1. And let's say, for this one, we'll say i plus 2. And for this one, we'll say i plus 3. Now what that means is whatever i comes up as, that means that that's the value of this layer and the next three things come from the layer below it, the layer below that, and the layer below that. So for example, if I create a new solid and put it right here, its index value is 2, and the index value of the next three nulls are 3, 4, and 5. So if I copy this section right here and paste it into the orientation as well, I can now copy my whole clipboard data and say I had a new solid. I could put it right here above these three nulls, whichever are the next three nulls, make it 3D, and when I paste that data, it automatically aligns. Super. Now the reason I want this to be so universal is because I'd like to be able to paste this even if null 1, 2, and 3 aren't truly the names there. I just want to be able to place a solid above three nulls and have it aligned to them. Because for example, in my original motion tracking data, I've got all these points and I might want something that is just basically like this one, this one, and this one, and I want to define a ground plane real quick. So I can move these up to the top of the stack here 
add a new solid. And as long as it's 3D and above those three, I can paste. And instantly, I've got a layer that is aligned right along the floor of this. So for example, if I say uh, generate a checkerboard on here, you can see that's creating a plane based on those three nulls there, which is pretty fantastic. Now, it's expression controlled, so when I double press E, you can see these two expressions are controlling all of this info. So I actually can't go rotate it or change it or move it around or anything like that. And that's a little bit annoying. So what I can do is I can grab these two, shift those both, and say keyframe assistant, convert the expression to keyframes. Now this is a little bit of a silly practice because every frame will have the same result in this case. But it does mean that I can ditch the expression now, ditch this expression, and in fact I can turn off the keyframing. And now I've just got this nice solid I can rotate it around so the checkerboard pattern is more aligned with my world. And now I've got this really useful piece of data when I ground plane for this scene, which is great to have. And it feels so good to have a nice motion track on something. Awesome, so that's all well and good, but now I realize I'm still doing a lot of stuff. I'm saying like layer, new, solid, setting its properties, saying it's 3D, moving it, and just like, it's a lot of little teeny steps. So since we start by creating a solid, I happen to remember this amazing website, motionscript.com. It's Dan Ebert's awesome catalog of using expressions and scripts within After Effects to make your workflow better. One of his very first scripting lessons is called creating a layer and mask. And that's exactly what I need to do. So we'll scroll down and you can see that there's some very simple code required to create your own solid. Uh, here he has one that selects the active comp, the active project, and then says within that comp, add a solid that is uh, red, one green, zero blue, so yellow, call it my square and make it 50 by 50 pixels. Pretty awesome. So within After Effects, I can go ahead and say file, script, run script editor. And within the script editor, I can paste that code for creating a solid. I'm gonna make mine white, one, 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 red, green, blue, call it solid and make it 2000 by 2000 pixels wide. I'm also going to add this property that says my solid dot 3D layer equals true. That'll make it a 3D layer. I'm nesting all of that within an undo group. That way, after I run the script file, I could undo everything all at once with the control Z. All right, so let's give this a try. I'll save it as test zero. Um, now, if you haven't ever used scripts in After Effects before, one thing you might need to do before all this is go to edit preferences, general, and right here, check the box that says allow scripts to write files and access network. Oh, and while I'm here, I'm gonna turn off the startup screen. Okay. So now I can say file, script, run script file. And I just have that saved on the desktop right here. I'll run it. Check it out, it creates a solid, it's white, it is 2000 by 2000, and it's, uh, yeah, it's a 3D layer. So that saves that very first step of having to go layer, new, solid, all that stuff. So pretty cool, but I think this can do more. In version two, I added a little bit more code. I decided to define the variables my position as the my solid dot property position. Same thing for orientation. I'm saying that it is the solid that I just created, property orientation. And then I can have those variables have an expression added to them with this dot expression equals. And then I'm just pasting in all of this code from my earlier work to the position and all of this code 
to the orientation. I'm putting it all within quotes, makes it kind of long, but then I have the end of my undo group and that's great. So let's delete that. I'm going to run this script file. Test one. And look at that. It created the solid. And if I press P shift R, it reveals that an expression is being used to drive where the solid is. If I open that up, it's that whole expression that we figured out earlier. Great. Now, when we were doing this manually earlier, I baked these keyframes as the next step. And I'll bet there is a way to bake these keyframes with an expression. So we'll jump over to Creative Cow, where there are people who know more than I do, and type uh, bake expression. And when I search for this, I found this quick and dirty expression baker, a uh, post by Brian Woods. And if I read the entire thread, they got to a really great solution down here at the bottom. It's marked as the solution. And it's a function, convert expression to value. It's pretty great. It has some variables to and some if then statements up at front to double check that there are expressions in the first place and how to evaluate them over time, how many keyframes there are going to be. And then at the bottom here, I'll just copy this all into the expression editor. If I paste it down here, uh, it looks like down at the bottom, it tries to convert the expression to value of the position, the anchor point, rotation, scale, and opacity. Now, I happen to just be using a couple of these properties. I'm using the position and I'm using the orientation. I'm not actually using these values, so I'm just going to kill those. And I see that there's a secondary ungroup nested within here. I don't need that either. Now, once that's all cleaned up, it looks like this. Beautiful piece of code. So if I jump back into my sample and I say file script and let's run that test2 script file, look at that. It went ahead and created that solid. Now if I press P to reveal the position and then shift R to reveal the orientation, it looks like these values have been baked right to its actual initial state. And I can see the dropdown because it has preserved the expression down here and it turned it off. That's the disable expression thing right here. Now it's possible you might want these in case you do something like happen to move this null for some reason and then you want to realign it by enabling them again. But I don't think I'm ever going to use it that way. These are these nulls are usually pretty fixed in my book. So let me just undo through creating that solid and everything. And I remember that earlier I was able to add an expression up here for the orientation and position like this. So perhaps down here at the bottom, I can say something like my position dot expression equals uh, quote, quote, nothing. And in the same thing here, my orientation dot expression equals quote, quote, nothing, semicolon. All right, so let's save this and try that again. Uh, file, script, recent files, test two. Okay, it appeared. Let's press P and then shift R. Look at that, it's created a solid, it's 3D, it's aligned to these three nulls, and then it killed all of the expression data in here, so that's just how it comes in. From that point, if we use the gizmos to translate that, it'll always keep it uh, basically within that same plane, coplanar. That's not the right way to use that word, but uh, in any case, this is awesome. This has done all of those steps that I wanted it to do before. Now, I realized something kind of annoying. Usually this composition started off like this with a camera at top, and I decided to run that script, and here's what happened. It looks like it's totally flat. And that's because down here, the solid used the camera as its first point of reference, and then it used these two nulls to align itself. And that's because the solid has to be created directly above the three nulls it's using. And normally in After Effects, when you have a layer selected, 
and you say layer new solid blah, it creates it right above the layer that was selected. But when you run a script, it's starting fresh and it always creates the solid way up top. Now I could always make sure to drag these up to the top, but really I'd rather be able to select the layer that's the top of these three and then run my script, no matter where it is in the layer stack, in case there are hundreds of nulls from motion tracking or something. I did not know how to do this, so I reached out to people who know more than I do. I went back to creativecow.net. They have a forum for After Effects questions and a forum for expressions, which is great. So just a few days ago, I posted my problem. I have a layer selected in my project. I want to create a solid directly above it in the layer stack. I then explained some more about my problem and where I got some of the existing code that I was using. And then just half a day later, I got a response from James Ronan, right here. He says to try using the .movebefore method. I wasn't familiar with this, but he was kind enough to provide some sample code to try within mine. So now adapting some of this code into my code resulted in this final create aligned solid code. It's a lot of text. It's a lot of crazy stuff. I am not a good coder at all, but I am a decent copy and paster when I can rely on the talents of people like Walter Soika and Dan Eberts and some of the other amazing people who post in the creativecow.net. So as the very last step, I can save this JavaScript file into my After Effects support file scripts folder right here. Now I've already saved this before. But when I come into my comp with the three nulls, I'll select whatever the top of the three nulls is. Then I'll say file, scripts, and my create aligned solid script is right there. I can click on it, and right there, a solid is created with no keyframes or anything on it. All I have to do is select that top null and run my script file. It's a great, simple solution that actually contains a lot of complicated stuff going on in the background. And if I were a better coder, I'm sure that there's probably even more efficient ways to do this. But this kind of Frankenstein approach did result in a simple script that is saved right here in a menu that I can run anytime I need to do this function. And to be honest, I have spent hours doing this manually before. And to be honest, there was probably already a solution to something like this on aescripts.com. But I kind of like that I started with a simple problem and was able to use all of the resources I had online to cobble together something that I could run with a click of a mouse and do something that saves me valuable, valuable work time. I'm going to give you guys a copy of this script. It's down in the description below. And all you have to do is save that JavaScript file into your uh, After Effects support files scripts folder. And uh, while I'm at it, I'll actually throw in this create folders script. It's a really simple script that I made a while back that does this uh, file script create folders. And then over here in the project window, it creates these five folders an output, comps, footage, elements, pre comps, and stock. This is the organization that I always use to do my After Effects project. And it's fun, but if you didn't want to use exactly that, you could right click on this, uh, edit it. And you can see it's as simple as this one command that creates folders labeled whatever the heck you want. It's a really simple code if you want to start out with something that saves you just a little bit of time at the start. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me on this kind of complicated process. I hope that it inspires you to try to figure out great shortcuts and techniques and also encourages you to reach out to the amazing, valuable After Effects communities that already exist online for all of these kinds of questions. If you're running into the problem, probably someone has before. You can reach out on creativecow.net and get great answers from some of these people. I even try to chime in whenever I'm on here if I see a question that I have an answer to. And it's really great to have a community of people who are trying to do the same kinds of things. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day, wonderful week, wonderful year. Keep on after-effecting, and uh, we'll see you next time.